All right, it's episode three of a suite, it seems. Uh, I'm still wearing this shirt, which means I haven't changed, I haven't like done anything new, uh, because I really, really wanted to get to talk about this. Uh, this is Watchmen, and if you've never heard of Watchmen before, welcome to what many people would say is the single greatest comic book ever written. Single greatest, let's say graphic novel, because comic book and graphic novel are not the same thing. Uh, just so you know, comic books are kind of, they're short and they're skinny. This is neither. Um, this is generally, graphic novels are made up of multiple comic books, and so traditionally this was, it came out in comic book form, and now it's bound together as one big graphic novel, and it is truly amazing. So, uh, Watchmen is by Alan Moore, uh, this guy right here, that's Alan Moore. He looks kind of crazy, like a wizard or a witch, and the art is by Dave Gibbons. Uh, nowadays, Alan Moore gets talked about a lot. He gets tons and tons of credit. Everybody loves Alan Moore. He wrote V for Vendetta. He wrote The Watchmen. He wrote a bunch of other things that have lots and lots of coverage, and, you know, he's a, he's a little bit crazy, um, as the picture might help you understand. But I think sometimes that people forget that Dave Gibbons is essential to sort of why this is probably one of the greatest graphic novels ever written, um, created, let's say, because it's not just about the writing. So Watchmen is set in a dystopian future. Uh, it it really helps if you know a few things about comic books to really appreci appreciate Watchmen, but you don't have to. Um, I think a lot of people, they, they, they get so intimidated because this is one of the greatest graphic novels ever written. They're like, oh, but I don't know. I'm scared. I, what if I don't like it? What if, uh, and honestly, like, that's, that's great. That's good to be, you know, afraid and, and, you know, cautious that you might not like it or you, maybe you need to know a little bit more in order to like it. Um, but you don't have to, uh, like everything you need to know is in this book and anything you know outside of the book it's helpful, but you don't need it. So Watchmen is set in a dystopian future. Uh, it kind of imagines the world um, based on, on the 1980s. And so if you are young, if you are, you know, a younger generation, uh, maybe you're not thinking too much about what was going on in the 1980s. The 1980s was the era of, you know, punk rock and rebelling against the establishment, and it was the era of the Cold War. And so people were very, very afraid of the possibility that they could get blown up at any moment. That was a real possibility. The United States had enough nuclear weapons to blow up the planet multiple times. Russia had enough weapons to blow up the world multiple times. And so everybody kind of lived in this incredible terror that at one moment, one of those two could decide to blow the other one up and then we're all dead. The, the concept of mutually assured destruction, everyone could die based on like one bad decision. And it was scary. And so the Watchmen kind of thinks about that, and it takes that fear and that concept, and it also kind of introduces superheroes to it. So in the world of Watchmen, superheroes have existed for a long time. There was once a super team, kind of like the Justice League, if you know what that is, um, and they disbanded. They, they stopped existing altogether. The world kind of, a few things went bad with superheroes, and so they... They all just sort of decided, we're not going to be superheroes anymore. That's it. There's there's no more superheroes. Um, but now, suddenly, somebody is killing former Watchmen. And so the team was called Watchmen, and they, they used to get together, and they used to fight, and they had a long legacy. There were multiple versions of the Watchmen who would get together, and they would fight crime. And so all these years later... Um, somebody is killing former Watchmen, and they start with this guy known as the Comedian, who is a seriously not nice guy. He was on the good guy's side, but he wasn't a good dude. And as the other remaining living members of, the, of Watchmen kind of get together and try to figure out who killed the comedian, like, what's going on, like, why did the, and it's, of course, ironic, of course, he's the comedian, and he's dead, and the laughter has stopped, and all of that kind of stuff, so, uh, you've got one character known as the Night Owl, and he's sort of like the techie superhero guy who doesn't really have superpowers, and then, and then there's the Silk Spectre, and then there's Dr. Manhattan, who is basically a walking nuclear bomb who can, like, multiply and grow and shrink and all these other kinds of things, he's unstoppable, and then, so that was, Night Owl, Silk Spectre, um, Dr. Manhattan, and uh, there's Ozymandias, who is like the super intelligent guy, and I feel like I'm forgetting who the last one is for some odd reason. 
Um, but they are trying to solve the mystery of who killed who who killed them and who watches the Watchmen, of course, is getting spray painted all over the place because um, the Watchmen didn't really get monitored. There was no one to kind of step in and stop them when they overstepped their boundaries. And, and it's sort of looking into this history of like, who are the heroes and are the heroes really all that heroic? And as you learn more about the comedian, the more apparent it becomes that he was a really, really awful guy. Like, the worst. Um, and he's connected to, you know, the Vietnam War and he, he does all these different kinds of things. And so part of you is not exactly sad that the comedian died. And then part of you is, you know, trying to help solve this mystery. And all the way along is sort of this question, like, does the world really need superheroes? Does the world need heroes? Is being a hero really good? Um, are like, who keeps heroes in check, which is, you know, a pretty important question in, you know, 2016 when we think about uh, the people who, you know, enforce the law and, you know, they're who sprays protesters and who shoots people who are unarmed as they walk down the street. Like, these are important questions. And so, like, what rights and privileges do we surrender to kind of gain control over our authorities and, and what rights and privileges do we surrender by even having heroes along the way? And so there's these these bigger kinds of questions in Watchmen that force you to kind of question like this whole idea of superhero-ness and, and superheroism and and whether or not they're like it even makes sense to have something like the Justice League or Batman or, or Superman or or any of that kind of other stuff. Like like who watches Superman? Who tells Superman to stop what he's doing when Superman goes too far? Who stops Batman if Batman decides, you know, that he's had enough? And but what happens if they if all the superheroes just quit doing their job one day? What's gonna happen to society if if you know law and order just kind of say, you know what, you guys sort it out. You're you're on your own. We we tried our best and you know we can't do anymore. And so along the way, you have each character gets their own sort of chapter. So Dr. Manhattan gets his own chapter, and it is crazy. Uh, Silk Spectre gets her own chapter. Um, Night Owl gets his own chapter. And of course, the other guy who I kept forgetting his name is Rorschach, or R Rorschach, or however you want to say that word. Uh, it is... I believe it's supposed to be pronounced Rorschach. Uh, his face is a Rorschach test and it like moves around expressing his emotions. And Rorschach is a really interesting character too because like his moral compass isn't really clear. Is he he's trying to do the good thing and he's trying to do what's right for everybody. And you know, in some ways he's very Spock-like in that he's trying to be quite logical in the way that he processes things. And you know, maybe the right thing to do uh, is not the like super clear-cut like a morally obvious choice you know like oh yeah I'm gonna take down the bad guy who's holding a gun to a little old lady's head um, honestly like from Rorschach's point of view maybe there's a legitimate reason not to like stop that guy from pulling the trigger because you know she's a little old lady and she's gonna die eventually anyway uh of course the well, that's a I, I'm not saying this this would be you know perhaps Rorschach's way of reasoning through this and so, uh, of course, the whole question of, like, right and wrong. What is right? What is wrong? Like, who decides right versus wrong? Like, that's a really important question that's being raised in all of this. So this is sort of a deconstruction of, of superheroism. So if you like superheroes, like, what a cool way to kind of, like, ask questions about the stuff that you love. If you don't like superheroes, then, you know, this might raise some of the things that you already feel uncomfortable about with, with superheroes and with comics and, and all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, once you've read this, once you've, like, really chewed it, it takes a long time. And I'm going to be honest with you, every single time I read Watchmen, I am, like, depressed for weeks uh, because it forces me to ask, like, really hard questions. And I'm really struggling to kind of come up with answers. And, and I never really come up with good answers because they're not simple questions. Um, so it, it, it's very hard, and it can be an emotional experience. And, and honestly, if you are reading a book that gives you an emotional experience, like, Wow, that is what books are for. So, like, 
I can't recommend this enough. And after you've read it, I strongly encourage you to go and read more about the comics that it's based on. Uh, Alan Moore wanted originally to use characters that already existed in the DC universe. DC owned the characters of the Blue Beetle and the Peacemaker and the Black Canary and Liberty Bell and some other characters, and they weren't doing anything with those characters. And so Alan Moore had this great idea. He's like, okay, I'm going to create this book and I'm going to do all this like amazing, like gritty and scary stuff with these characters. And DC was like, uh, we might want to use those characters again later. So like, we, you, we don't want you to break them. Could you maybe, like, but we love your idea. And Alan Moore was really tempted to just be like, you know what, screw it, I'm done. That's uh, no time for this. But DC was like, no, 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 here, here, here. Let's take these characters that you've created and let's make similar versions to them and then we'll tell this story. So you don't need to know those characters to read Watchmen, but if you learn a little bit more about those characters and how they sort of fit into the overall history of comics and, and the world of comics and, you know, the current DC universe, um, it becomes an even better book. It's like really amazing, but you don't have to do that. Um, hopefully this is the kind of book that makes you realize like, wow, superhero comics can be so good, like so good. And so I really, really encourage you that, you know, if you're kind of at that point and you've made it to grade 11 or 12 and you still haven't read a book that really just like moved something in your heart and made you kind of think that books could be amazing, this really might be that <coughs> book for you. And I'd really encourage you to check it out. And those dogs over there uh, in the corner that you see there, they are now being very bad. So I'm going to cut this off and I'd encourage you to check this out. So uh, Watchmen, check it.